Let's <coughs> 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 clear the old throat there. Just finished my live stream. And it's finished Sunderland 3, Donk Aster Rovers nil, or to do things precisely, Donk Aster Rovers nil, Sunderland 3. And I did predict we needed to keep a clean sheet today because Donk Aster, you know, the 23rd of bottom, only scored 13 goals the whole season and they've let in a shitload of goals. So today for me was a must win game. It should, be, it should have been on paper an easy game to win. And also a clean sheet. And that's the way it's worked out. So a nice Christmas present this Christmas, you know, on the unofficial bank, on the official bank holiday, kind of unofficial Boxing Day move back for Sky on a bank holiday Monday when people are at work. This should have been on Boxing Day, but I'm happy with the win. I'm over the moon with the win. And to be fair, 3 0 doesn't do the game justice. It could have been 7 or 8, to be fair, if it wasn't for some really good. Last gasp defending from Doncaster, who I must say with a makeshift youthful side. They've had COVID since December the 11th and they're just getting back. To, you know, they've had to play a really young side. So Doncaster, you know, did themselves justice. Did themselves, you know, they, they should be walk away a bit of pride from this game. Some of the youngsters played really well. And also the keeper, I think it was, is it Jones? He did really well. So, you know... Don't ask to a side, I can see them stay up and, and sort of next season. And, and Sunderland did win. We had Diarco down the right hand side who played really well as kind of the wing back. Gooch on the left hand side, we had Flanagan right, Doyle, Hoffman. Evans come back into the fold because Winchester had a bit of a knock. <clears throat> So I've heard that's the reason why he never travelled or not, or not, or if he did travel, he's not playing today. Broadhead's out for three months. Oh. We all seem to get some bad news with good news, don't we? Broadhead has been sidelined and now he's officially out for three whole months. That's probably effectively the rest of the season over for Broadhead. So, you know, that either, that's either one or two things. Does he get back and will he always have injuries? So do we actually sign Broadhead? Or will Everton want to get rid of him on the cheap because he's always going to have injuries? It's, it's one of those, it's, it's catch-22, you know. The talent's there, but we need to make find a way of keeping him fit. There were hamstrings, it's a dodgy hamstrings, one of the worst injuries you could possibly get because you're always going to reoccur. And as someone once said to me, a hamstring's like an old friend, they always come knocking on the door. But, Sunderland won 3 0. Diaku played well on the right hand side, causing them all sorts of trouble for the first goal. Cut inside in the penalty box, he was brought down. Referee Bobby Madley relegated from the Premier League into League One. For me, the referee, for me today, refereed the game really well. I thought Bobby Madley had a good game. No fuss, no messing about. It was the linesman. For me, I wouldn't give him a Christmas bonus. The linesman, he was absolutely clueless. But Madley had a good game. So Bobby Madley, give a, give a penalty. Ross Stewart st stands up, never scored in, I think he scored once in nine games. Puts the keeper the wrong way, left hand side, good goal, 1 0 Sunderland. And we continue to get to create chances. I thought Dan Neil had was superb at pulling the strings in the centre. Pritchard busy, looks like someone said on the live stream a different gravy. Embleton, one of his better games. <clears throat> Since he's come back, Embleton today was all over the place. One or two good saves from the keeper from Embleton. Hit the post as well. And then he got his goal just before half-time. Lovely bit of quick quick thought from Flanagan for the free kick. Don't ask the switched off. Right hand side, Pritchard puts the ball in the box. Embleton unmarked. Sort of gets the ball down with a touch and then scissor kicks on her over the top. Gets the ball under the keeper. Keeper looked behind and saw it went in the back of the net and he said his, his hands went down, his head went down. He, but at the end of the day, it was a great finish from Elliot Embleton. <clears throat> so 2 0 at half time. Completely dominated. They had no shots in the first half. We had about 12 or 8 or whatever it was. So we did completely dominate the whole game. They made some changes at half time with Max Sheffrey, changed the formation, brought on Bugle, or what we call him the big. The big sort of centre forward and they were just hoofing balls, one, two, three balls forward early on in the second half. And it sort of made Hoffman one or two little little opportunities for Dunk Aster, made one or two saves. But then we got the third goal. <clears throat> the third goal. And to be honest, after the third goal, for me that was game over. Again, down the left hand side, I think I think it was Gooch got the ball down the byline, got the ball across, and there was Pritchard to back heel the ball. Towards their defender who chested it down in his own in his own goal. That defender, forgetting his young the young lad's name, 
but he had a superb game considering of his age, the amount of times he's played for the team, and even though they got beat 3 0 and he let score an own goal, for me, he was one of their better defenders. <coughs> Denver Hume came on, Sirkin came on, and Harris came on. But for me, the biggest bugbearer, and I'm going to continue to say these until the cows come home, was the linesman of Dier. Diaku, I mean, is it, is it allowed to rip the shirt off? What have you got to do to get a free kick? Basically, what have you got to do? Is Diaku literally got to have his shirt ripped off his back to get a free kick? Because this lad... Time and time again down the right hand side was getting tugged left, right and centre and the linesman simply sitting there on the touchline, not even, what, what was he doing? The he, can, he can give a free kick or he can, give a, he can give an offside decision on the other side of the pitch but he cannot give a free kick for someone, it must be allowed now. I must, I must know that I must know nothing about football. It must be allowed to rip the shirt of someone's play, of the player's back, because he, he was standing there on the line, picking his nose, doing absolutely diddly squat. This guy calls himself an official, and he did diddly squat on that side. He's getting paid for nothing. He's getting paid for nothing. Joe Bloggs, who watches football, could stand there and probably be in better shape and could do a better job than that linesman. The linesman, the official, was absolutely pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. He should not be allowed to officiate again. He does his penance and that is banned for three or four games. Shocking. Shocking from that linesman. Anyway, rant over. There we go. We've won 3-0, so there's no point being angry for too long. Now we move on to Sheffield Wednesday at home. We are now in second place, but we have got a couple of games played more than Wigan. So we'll go through the table now while I'm here. Quickly go through the table. <clears throat> while I'm doing this, if you are new to the channel, please give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. Please subscribe to the channel. That for me, if you're watching the channel, and there's so much percentage of people watch the channel who don't subscribe. Please subscribe. If you're new to the channel and you can, and you you know, it doesn't matter who, what team you support, doesn't matter what team, if you just enjoy the content, please subscribe. That will be absolutely much appreciated. And thank you for everybody out there who has already subscribed. So the team today and the standings at the end. Rotherham, who got beat yesterday, yesterday are in first place. But Sunderland are only one point behind Rotherham. We don't... Have a, we, we've got a plus 16 goal difference and Rotherham have got a massive plus what 20 odd. We're going to have plus 20 goal difference. Our goal difference is still inferior to Wigan and Rotherham, but we have one point more than Rotherham uh, than Wigan and we move into second place, but we're going to have two games in hand. And then Plymouth are three points behind Sunderland, but we have a game in hand over Plymouth. And then Wickham have one game in hand over Sunderland in fifth place and we are four points ahead of Wickham. Then Oxford are in 6th place, they do have a game in hand over Sunderland, and we are 7 points ahead of those. So, to the, to the last game of this calendar year again, Sheffield Wednesday, we need now to make sure we can get sort of revenge against Sheffield Wednesday and get 3 points against Sheffield. Thanks for watching the video, much appreciated, take care, God bless me, God go with you, and don't forget, I will leave a link down below in the description of my other channel, The Mad Mistake Visits, Pop over there, you know, you don't have to subscribe, but if you enjoy the footage that's on the other channel, uh, uh, please subscribe. Trying to get a thousand subscribers on that channel, that would be much appreciated. Man of the match today, man of the match, standout performance, standout performance, Bailey Wright, down the, down the right hand side, did really well. Pritchard, a different gravy in midfield. Stewart holds the ball up well, Gooch had a decent game down the left hand side. Diaku was constantly running down the right, but got nothing off the, off the linesman. But I will give man of the match. Dan Neal, again, instrumental in midfield for me, was vying for man of the match. Looks so comfortable, compact, content, really well. Holds himself well on the ball, turns with the ball, swivels with the ball, controls the ball. A oh, good game from Dan Neal. But I'm going to give it to Elliot Embleton. I thought Elliot Embleton had his best game for a long time in a Sunderland shirt. He played well against Arsenal during the week. And now he's played well today. So to get Elliot Embleton firing on all cylinders, 
for me, that is one of the keys to get us in the second part of the season. Because he's been a bit of a bystander over the last few games. So with players like Aidan O'Brien has gone down with COVID. Aidan O'Brien's gone down with COVID. Winchester's taken a knock. Broadhead out for three months. So we need players like... Embleton now to shine and perform well along with Diago. Again, take care. God bless me. God go with you. And we'll see you for the preview. We'll see you for the preview for the Sheffield match probably on Tuesday or Monday. It's Monday today. So tomorrow or Tuesday, yes. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your, your bank holiday. Yeah.